Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I was uh, praying and praying hard because uh, I wanted to be here when Brother uh, when Brother Houston was here, get to meet the invisible evangelist I've never met. And uh, he was he's kind of like he was kind of like the Lord there for a while. He just said go, and I went. Never met him. Don't know who he is. You know, I just said yes, sir. <laughs> you know, so he's been an influence on my life already. But I was praying, you know, what the Lord would have me to teach and preach, and uh, uh, just want to get just to teach a little bit this morning, and then in the morning service, uh, uh, and give you uh, and really preach. But I like to spend the Sunday school hour just teaching on what the Lord teaches me and reading through God's Word. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I'm going to teach uh, on this subject, uh, something uh, the Lord's dealt with me about, and I've been uh, reading in, uh, through my Bible and, and different things, and on the subject of charity. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is the, uh, uh, we call it the love chapter, uh, charity, and I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with it. If you've been in church for any length of time, it's a very familiar portion of Scripture. But I'd like to just go with this uh, in, verse, uh, in verse 1. The Bible says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Now, charity in the Bible is uh, it's, it's the word for love. Uh, you, know, we, uh, you, you look at when charity is mentioned and, and the definition of charity, and I'll give you a definition here. Uh, just as simple means affection, uh, goodwill, love, benevolence brotherly love. So all of the things that you associate with love and how you love people is what the word charity uh, would mean. But charity is a different kind of love. A lot of times the world tries to teach us their definition of love, and it's not the same as God's definition of love. And I believe that uh, as Christians, it's, it's good to refresh ourselves and to remember what God expects of his children in this area of love. I taught this to the teenagers because uh, I I have my heart to the my heart right now is for those teenagers and the world is constantly pushing their idea of love on today's generation. You watch TV shows, you get a, you watch any kind of uh, the, the teen shows that are really pushed out there, and I preach against them things hard because all the world is trying to do is push their agenda on this generation. But even you watch your Disney shows, even you watch just some of these simple, uh, harmless television shows, but they're trying to push their idea of love in this world and even on us Christians. And sad to say, when I go and I visit some friends and, and, and different uh, peers my age, uh, it works. It, the world is affecting our idea of love. And I'd like to just encourage you that charity, God's kind of love, is a different kind of love. Amen. Two types of love in the Bible. You've probably heard them before. I won't go over them too much, but uh, agape, an agape love and a phileo love uh, is, uh, is often mentioned. Uh, but basically, it's, it's two types of love. One, lo one is a love that gives, and another is a love that takes. I love the verse. John 3.16 is a great illustration for God, so love the world that he gave. Amen. God's kind of love is a giving love. So when we talk about charity, when you look at charity in this chapter... You want to think of a godly kind of love, not a love that the world will try to tell you what it means, not a love that's, that's selfish, but a love that is based on giving. Amen. Uh, the greatest act of love that you can find in the Bible is Jesus Christ. The greatest act of love that God ever did for us is that he gave us his son to die on an old rugged cross, and that's foreign to the world. Jesus is foreign to this world. They don't understand why God would send his son and why God would die. And when you go out soul winning, you witness to people. People don't always understand, you know, well, why would God, why would God do that? And I tell them, say, I don't know. All I know is it's because God loved me. Amen. And that's the uh, convicting thought, that God loved me enough, even when he hates sin, that he'd be willing to send his son to die. Amen. And so in our lives as Christians, I believe we're all saved here this morning, born again. If not, we can get that settled. Amen. But I believe you're born again. So in your life, God wants love to abound, charity. If you look there at the end, I'll show you uh, verse 13. It says, now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So God wants in our lives as Christians for this godly kind of love, this charity, this giving love to be a great aspect of our lives. Um, give you just a, a little bit here. 
uh, we're going to talk about first the priority of charity. The priority of charity. Look there at verse number 1 through 3. We're going to read that again. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Man, Paul is really giving to these Corinthians. He's setting up a foundation, trying to get them to understand how important charity is in the lives of Christians. He said, you can have, you could speak with the tongues of all the, all the tongues in the world, all the tongues of men, tongues of angels, but if you don't love people, if you don't have charity, he says, I'm become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. He says, you're like, you're like a sounding brass. You make a big noise, but just for a little while. You're like clouds without rain, as Proverbs says. Amen. God wants a Christian that makes a lasting impact and a lasting influence on a dark world. But we can't do that, according to here. We'll become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Uh, my dad likes to say, you're like a firework Christian. You blow in, blow up, and blow out. Amen. That's all, that's all you do, he says. You know, he says, you want, we need charity in our lives. He says, look here, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. Boy, you could be the greatest Christian in the world. You could build the biggest church. You could have the most answers to prayer. You could remove mountains. But if you don't have charity, if you don't have a love for God and a love for people, the Bible says we're nothing. Man, that's a convicting thought. Because how much do we strive in our lives to do, we want to do great things. Amen. When I went to Bible college, all those Bible college students, you know, it's all about who's going to build the biggest church, you know, or who's going to see the, you know, the most saved. And, you know, but according to this verse, we had to throw all that out the window and just remember who's going to do the, who's going to love the most, who's going to love God the most, who's going to love souls the most. This is what makes a difference when you go out to a small town and there's only maybe 500 people and you want to build a church. There's not any hopes of building a church of 40,000. <laughs> But when you have a love for God and a love for people, that's what will make the difference. Verse number three, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, you could be a martyr for Christ. And have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Man, it's funny how that you go from being nothing to where it profiteth you nothing. You get no gain from it. You could give all your goods to feed the poor. You could give your body to be burned and it still gain you nothing if you don't have charity, if we don't have this godly kind of love. Amen. And let me, I forgot to, to establish the fact too, this kind of love only comes if you're saved. You can only have a godly love from being born again because it's a love that God gives. Amen. The world tries to get this kind of love but they fall short because it comes from God. So we see the priority of charity, how that we could be the greatest Christian in all the world. We could do the most of any, of any Christian. And Paul is a boy, is that, he's a good example of that, amen. He's uh, the greatest Christian, as we talked about with Brother Houston just mentioned, the greatest Christian I believe ever, done more for Christ than, than I could ever hope. And he still said, if I don't have charity, I'm nothing. Boy, if Paul said that, what are we? Amen. Amen. Verse number, uh, the priority of charity. Now verse 4, the description of charity. So we see the, the importance of having this godly kind of love in a Christian's life. But what is this godly kind of love? God gives us a description, what, it, what, what it's about, what it does. Look there, charity suffereth long. Amen. That suffereth long is to persevere, not to lose heart. To be patient even in bearing offenses. Boy, that's, that's opposite of the world, amen. The world says if somebody hits you, hit them back. <laughs> God says turn the other cheek. You see, it's, it's opposite. Because it's funny, whatever the world does is always opposite of God. You can always count on that. Whatever the world wants to do, it's always going to be opposite of God. And the world's kind of love says that I'll give you love if you give me something. 
Amen. God says your love should suffer long even if they hurt you. Love your enemies. The world doesn't understand that. Love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Why do that? I don't get anything from it. That's because God's kind of love is not a selfish love. It's a love that gives. Charity suffereth long. Our love for people, our love for the Lord, our love for each other should be a love that suffers long even when we're offended. That will keep you in church, amen, because you serve in a church in any length of time. You have a pastor over you for any length of time, and boy, people are going to fail. Amen. But you love the way God wants you to love, and it doesn't matter what's done to you. You'll be there. Amen. This is what brings the prodigal son home because he knows when he gets there, dad's going to love him, even though he walked away and hurt his dad. This is what will bring your children home. Maybe they've gone wayward. Maybe, they, maybe they've gone and disappointed you. But you let this charity suffer long. And boy, it'll make a difference. It'll make a lasting impact. It'll be more than a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Amen. Charity is suffereth long and is kind. You know, I think kindness is a, is a lost it, it, it's just it's a lost art, if I could say it that way. In this world, they don't understand kindness. They think that you're up to something. If you try to do something for somebody, they think, well, what do you want? <laughs> you go and visit somebody at their home, and uh, you, you know uh, we go soul winning, and then I see somebody saved and I give them the gospel, and then I follow up with them. They think that, well, you just you're a church that wants my money. That's all it is, you know. But God says we do that because it's it's kind. Because the charity, the love that God has for people and the love that God wants us to have is a kind love. A love that doesn't, uh, that's not out to hurt. A love that's kind. A kindness that comes. It's an attitude that comes from this charity. Kindness is an attitude as well. How you treat people. Boy, it's a big thing in church. Boy, it's a big thing working with people. Amen. How's your attitude? Are you kind? Do you take time for people? Do you try to understand? Just the other day, you know, and, and it's easier for ladies, I think, that for this than men because <laughs> the other day somebody did something. Man, I just got mad for some reason. I don't know why. I just wasn't walking with God like I was supposed to. I had to pray and ask for forgiveness. And my wife sat there over there, and she listened, listened, shook her head, and she said, Now, are you done? <laughs> and she said, You don't know what happened. She said, You may you know, she said, think about it. You know, she said, try to understand. And I had to remind myself, and the Holy Spirit said, listen to your wife. And, you know, I had to remind myself, you know, we don't know. Amen. But God wants us to be kind. Amen. That kindness. Charity envieth not. The next thing. Boy, all jam-packed in, these one little, in this one little verse. Charity envies not. Boy, that's a big thing. Envy. Amen. Do you envy? What's envy? Well, we all know that. Wanting what we don't have. Wishing we had what somebody else had. You know, charity, the godly kind of love, doesn't look around in the church and say, boy, I wish I had that kind of money. Boy, I wish I drove that kind of car. Boy, I wish I had those clothes. Boy, I wish I had, boy, I, man, God, if you would just. You know, charity doesn't envy. Charity looks around and loves people for who they are. Charity doesn't say, well, if you're rich, you can't come in because you've got more than what we have. Charity doesn't say that if you don't have a certain car in the parking lot, you can't come in. I've, we have churches in Hutchinson that are like that. If you don't drive a certain kind of car and it doesn't look a certain way, they won't let you park in their parking lot. It's crazy. But it's because they don't love people the way God loves them. Charity envies not. Do you envy? I think all Christians at one point or time may do. We sometimes envy. Maybe we want to see God do something in our lives like God's doing in somebody else's. Maybe somebody else is getting their prayers answered. Maybe somebody else has got a better job. I don't know, but charity envies not. If you want to have this godly kind of love, then you can't envy. Amen. But the world, their love, boy, that's opposite. It's all they do is envy. It's all they do is want what they don't have. It's all they do is go after and then they put you down and say, if I can't have it, then you can't have it. Amen. Charity vaunteth not itself. Charity doesn't brag. 
That's what that's talking about. Doesn't put itself up for display. Charity doesn't put a sign up and say, look what I got. <laughs> I have charity. A lot of Christians, sometimes we, you know, we, we walk around, and I know because I've been there, you know, where you maybe did something or you're proud of something. You know, you walk around, and everybody else has got to know about it because you want everybody to know. <laughs> Amen. And that's why, you know, like the Bible talks about that there are some things that should be done in secret, but if you want your reward here, you can have it. Amen. But that's what this is talking about, this, this vaunting itself. Charity doesn't walk around and say, hey, I love people. I'm the greatest. Uh, I'm the uh, epiphany or the, uh, I forgot the word. Man, a terrible Bible college student. Uh, but I, I, I have all the love in the world. That's like Jill Olstein. Man, I love people. Amen. He just vaunts himself. But, man, he, uh, never mind. I won't get into Jill Olstein today. But that's a whole other sermon. But charity doesn't lift itself up. If you walk around constantly lifting yourself up, putting yourself up for display, talking about how great of a Christian and how much love that you have for God and for people, that's not charity. That's not what God wants for us. Amen. And I don't believe anybody here has done that as many times as I've been, but it's a temptation in a Christian's life to do that. And that's why God puts it here, because as Christians we're tempted because what happens is you get charity and you love people. You begin to make an effect. You begin to help and you begin to think, boy, God's using me. Boy, I must be special. And then we have to remember that God's kind of love doesn't push itself up. Amen. It, and you look at the last part, is not puffed up. Amen. Doesn't puff itself. Amen. Charity, uh, it, and there's another verse, uh, and we won't go there, but the Bible says that charity edifieth. Amen. Charity doesn't lift itself up. God's kind of love edifies other people it builds other people up and that should be our goal as a christian that should be the goal of a pastor that should be the goal of anybody that's trying to help people is that you try to build others before you build yourself amen that's what we want that's what god wants god wants a christian that's more worried and more in love with him that he wants to help other people than he is to help himself that he'll, that he'll give, as, as, the, as the Bible talks about, that he'll give more. And, 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 uh, it, I forgot the verse again. Terrible Bible college student, amen. And the Bible, there's that verse where it mentions, and it just came to my mind and I lost it, but how that you're willing to give before you prepare, you prepare the field first, and then you go and take care of your house, amen, because you're more worried about giving, amen. Verse number five, doth not behave itself unseemly. That's, that's an unbecoming is what that's talking about. Doesn't behave itself unbecoming, unseemly, amen. Something that you wouldn't think, maybe something wrong. Charity doesn't behave itself in a wrong way, amen. God's kind of love, the love that we should have, should not show itself in an unseemly manner. We've seen that where maybe you walk into a restaurant and you see a child behave unseemly. <laughs> I work at the Hutch Clinic right now part-time uh, just to help make ends meet at the church there because the church can't take me on full-time. Uh, and it, I was working there, and I work in pediatrics with all the kids. I love working with children. And so, they let, and so the Lord opened the door so I could work there. And so I'm working there the other day, and man, there's this kid bouncing off the walls. <laughs> And I'm thinking, why would you let your child? I, I want to whoop him myself. You know, you just want to walk out there and say, hold on, let me show you how to do this. <laughs> you know, they do this. One, two, that drives me crazy. I, I hear this. One, two, and I want to go, pow, three. You know. Amen. But it's unseemly. Why? It's not the normal. It's out of the ordinary. It's not what should be done. And that's what God says about charity. Charity doesn't behave itself unseemly. You don't look at it and go, you know, that's not right. That's not normal. That's out of the ordinary. That's not what God would do. Amen. That's what God's trying to say. Our charity, our love for people, people should never look, around, look at us and go, you know, I don't, I don't think that's what God would do. You know, we shouldn't look at each other and be able to go, you know, that doesn't seem right. You ever seen Christians like that? When you grow, I grew up in churches and my dad's a pastor and people say how they love, they love the pastor. <laughs> and then you sit there as a pastor's son and go, really? That doesn't, that's not God's kind of love. God wouldn't do that. Amen. Amen. That's behaving unseemly. Amen. 
It's not what God wants. Then we keep going. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. In charity, seeketh not her own. Again, that idea of lifting itself up, taking care of herself before somebody else. Charity doesn't do that. God's kind of love doesn't seek for herself. It seeks for others. Is not easily provoked. Boy, that's a good one. Amen. Charity isn't easily provoked. So somebody can't do something to you, and all of a sudden you pop off. What? How dare you? Boy, you see that? I, uh, we grew up in, like I said, Cornerstone Baptist Church. Man, Dr. Miller would preach a paint off the walls, let me tell you. People walked out during the announcements. I'll never forget it. I mean, he'd be do, just doing the announcements. People would walk out. <laughs> I was like, what? like, where am I? You know, but he would preach and preach hard. But, you know, if you have a love for the Lord, if you have a love for God, it doesn't matter what the message is, you won't be provoked. Amen. It doesn't matter how tough it may seem. Boy, God, I can't believe you want me to do that. Amen. But charity's not easily provoked. It doesn't matter what somebody may do. Amen. We won't be easily provoked. Amen. That's a God's kind of love. Where we're not just all, we're not easily on our, we don't wear our feelings on our sleeve, so to speak. We're patient. We're kind. And then charity thinketh no evil. Let me tell you, this is a big deal. It may only be three words, but in this day and age, I f it feels like the days of Noah where their thoughts are evil continually. This was big with teenagers, and I know if it's big with teenagers, it's got to be even amongst the adults in this world because everything is evil. You look at the television shows, you look at, and I, and I get, and I, and I see what the kids, that, and I, I, I some of the kids I deal with, with the, in the public school, they tell me what goes on. And boy, it's just evil. Man, it's, it, and, it, and it's sick. Charity thinks no evil. Boy, it doesn't only just do, but charity doesn't think evil. Amen. How's your thought life? Do you think evil? Maybe you don't do it, but do you think it? Do you think opposite of God? Do you think opposite of what the Lord would want? Charity thinketh no evil, amen. And then rejoiceth not in iniquity. Charity doesn't rejoice in iniquity. How many Christians have I met? And how many, and, and it, I mean, lost people do this continually, but even in churches sometimes we can get to where we rejoice in iniquity. Maybe it's something small, but it's wrong. Charity doesn't rejoice in that. Charity doesn't take pleasure in sin. Charity finds no pleasure in sin. I was in Bible college, there would be some of the college students, and they would joke, you know, about some things. And I'd tell them, say, fellas, we don't joke about that. You know, that's wrong. And how easy it is sometimes. And, and, and it's a worldly mindset. You go into the world, they tell you the dirty, the dirty jokes, but they rejoice. They find pleasure in iniquity. Boy, when we have God's kind of love as, as, and, and, we're, and we want to love the way God wants us to love, we shouldn't rejoice in iniquity. We shouldn't find pleasure in sin. We should, we should put a stop to that, amen? We shouldn't be uh, one where somebody can come and tell us a dirty joke. Or we shouldn't be one where when we, uh, in, when we see the lives of people that, and you see what happens and how they get into sin, it ought to break your heart. Amen. Teenagers that fall off into sin and they fall off by the wayside, it breaks my heart because I know what sin is going to do to them. But that's because I want to love the way God wants me to love. And I'm not going to rejoice with them in sin. I'm going to cry and beg God to bring him back from that. A love, for, a love for God, this godly love, means that when your children, you, you, you pray and beg God that they don't fall into sin, not rejoice with them, not rejoice that they found a new way to do something wrong, but rejoiceth in the truth. Charity takes pleasure in the things of God, in truth, amen. Charity means when they, find, when they go out soul winning that you encourage them. Charity means when they, when they read the word of God and they feel God touch their heart about something and they say, Mommy, Daddy, or they say, Pastor, or, or whatever, and they say, look what God's taught me today. It rejoices in the truth of God's word. Uh, yesterday I was uh, uh, 
we I had a guy that's been coming to church. I gave him a track, and he's been coming. And yesterday, uh, I, I've been doing every Saturday where he comes over and we go through uh, some Bible lessons. And he's just new to church. He's been saved, but you know, new to the things of God. And so we were going over some things, and you know, teaching him the Bible. And he was just just eating it up. You know, you ever just see those kinds of people? They just eat it up. And he's just like, really. He's asking me questions, you know, and he asked me a funny question because the Bible, you know, we talked about the King James Bible and, and how that God says don't add or take away. It's why you shouldn't use other versions of the Bible and things like that. And so you should only use the King James Bible, by the way. And uh, so we got to talk about that. See, he goes, so, he goes, so tell me. He said, I was wondering about this. Does that mean if I memorize it but I misquote it? that I'm in trouble. <laughs> and I told him, I said, no, 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 that's not what the Bible was talking about. He goes, okay, that had me worried. He said, I was like, you know, he's like, I try to memorize it, but I misquoted it. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> you know, and it's funny to see people, but they rejoice in truth. And that's what we want. We want to have a love for God and a love for people where we rejoice with them in truth, in learning God's word. Amen. We got to keep going. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Those things are, uh, they explain themselves. Charity bears all things. Uh, to bear like a burden, like a man that has a backpack and walks. My, uh, my uh, uh, brother-in-law, Roy, in the military, he used to have to carry, he told me, a 90-pound sack for five miles, and they would have to jog and run, and, and all that he did and hurt his back. But it's that type of a bearing where charity takes that burden, that takes the burdens of others in prayer. And helps bear those things. Amen. Charity comes and says, can I pray for you? Can I love you through prayer and help you bear a burden? Amen. Charity doesn't look at people and say, well, hope everything works out okay. Charity says, I'll pray for you. Do you have a lost loved one? Let me help you bear that burden. Amen. Believeth all things. This doesn't mean that you just believe everything that comes your way. Amen. This, you know, it doesn't mean that you know. And all of a sudden, you believe the Quran with the Bible. You know, and do all. Nah, nah, nah. We're not talking about that. Amen. Believeth all things is different, but it believes all things according to God's word. Amen. Within the confines of the word of God. Amen. You believe God. You believe the word of God. You be, it doesn't matter if the Bible says it, you believe it. Amen. Maybe you don't understand it. And yesterday we went through that. He said, you know, I don't quite, uh, Bobby is his name. He said, you know, I don't quite understand it. And I said, well, Bobby, I said, there's a lot of things you're not going to quite understand in the Bible. I said, I don't understand half of it. Amen. I said, but I know this true. Amen. Charity believes. Amen. Because you love the Lord. Anyway, hopeth all things. Amen. What's the hope for us? The hope is Jesus is coming again. Amen. That hope of eternal life that one, that we will have. Amen. Charity hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Endure like to run a race when you're running and you get tired but you keep going and you press on and on and on and on. You endure. Charity endures all things. Amen. Doesn't matter what may come your way. Doesn't matter what trial you may face. Doesn't matter what heartache, what burden you may carry. You will endure for the cause of Christ. Amen. My sister, uh, she just gave birth to her third boy uh, yesterday, right, sir? Two days ago. Sorry, I don't even know my own family. <laughs> uh, I, I love my family. But uh, Charity, uh, uh, when I talk about this enduring day, uh, her, their little boy uh, came out, had, uh, had some problems uh, when, uh, with, with, just some, with breathing and, and just some different things. And so they, they, you know, they're, they're a little burdened right now. But, you know, she still, uh, when I talk to her, she still loves the Lord. Amen. You know, she still, she still is going to be in church today. Her husband's going to be in church. Mom's up there right now helping watch the kids. But it's a testimony to me. I've never gone through anything like what they're going through. It's tough to watch children. I mean, I, my little girl's healthy, and I, we prayed, and I didn't know what I would do. And I said, Lord, please allow my little girl to be healthy, and God's blessed so far. Uh, and I don't know what I would do, but she's a testimony to me of how that charity endures. Even when you don't understand, you ask God, why are you doing that? You still go on for the cause of Christ. Amen. So we see the description of charity. Number three, the endurance of charity. Look there, verse number eight. Charity never faileth. Never fails. Never stops is what the Bible's saying. Charity doesn't stop. Charity doesn't just quit. Char charity doesn't throw in the towel. Charity doesn't call it quits because something came on. Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. This is in reference to the word of God. 
what came that was perfect is the holy word of God. And I think it's funny there's a reference to Scripture here because your love for God and your love for people is, dire is directly a result of your interaction with God's Word. You want to love God more? Get in God's Word. You want to love people more? Read God's Word. Why? Because this is the mind of God. This will give you God's heart. This will help you understand what, how God sees it, what God feels about it. And you'll begin to see how God loves people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You want a burden for souls? Then read how Jesus died on a cross. You want a burden for maybe an area, maybe a burden to reach, maybe a burden to pray? Then find, a, find some scripture on the subject and read it till it burns and you watch God do something in your life. Because your love for the Lord is a direct result of your interaction with God's word. I believe that. I believe you get in God's word more, you'll love God more. Amen. You say, well, I don't know if I love God very much. Well, then I encourage you to go to the Gospels and read how he suffered and died and then walk away and say, I don't know if I love God. Amen. Amen. I challenge anybody that say, I don't know if I would love the Lord as much then read how Jesus died. Amen. It doesn't fail. Charity doesn't stop. It doesn't say, well, God, I think I don't love you today. Well, God, I don't, think I, wanna, I don't think I love people today. No, that godly kind of love never fails because God never stops loving us. Boy, isn't that a blessing? And a blessing to know that God never stops loving you, that God never gives up on you, that God doesn't throw in the towel on you, that God doesn't say, well, I think they're done now. I doesn't think I can do anything else with them. They've gone too far. Boy, God's love never stops. I love that thought. We're going to keep going over time. The preeminence of charity. The preeminence of charity. Just look there at verse number 13, then we'll be done. And now abide of faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. God is not saying if you can pick one over the other, pick charity. God is saying all three of these should be in a Christian's life. But the greatest of these three in your life should be charity. Charity is a, res, charity res, uh, is a direct, uh, or charity affects, I'm sorry. Charity affects these other two. Faith and hope can be affected by charity in a great way. You can have faith and hope, but if they're greater than your love for the Lord and greater than your love for people, then you're a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. But your faith and hope, but if charity, sorry, reigns over that faith and hope, if your love for God abounds more than what you're trying to do for yourself or what you're trying to look forward to, you love God and love people more. And the Bible says... You'll make an impact. Amen. I want to love the way God's lo God loves. I want to have God's kind of love. Amen. And there's so much more in the Bible. You look up the word charity, and it's all over Scripture and examples of it. And, boy, I, and I know I need to work on it because this is a good – because charity affects every relationship. Amen. Affects our marriage. Affects our walk with God. Affects our love for people. Amen. Have God's kind of love. And I promise you, you see God do something in your life you've never seen before. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father.